माता जी माई सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज लाइक आई डोंट फाइंड इंटरेस्ट इन लॉट ऑफ नॉइज एंड चैंटिंग एंड ऑल मीन्स आई लव चैंटिंग बट बींग एलोन इन अ रूम एंड चैंट नॉट जम्पिंग अराउंड डांसिंग एंड ऑल सो वट वुड यू एडवाइज फॉर मी So uh, first my first question is when you say chanting what is it that you are chanting when you are alone uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra You are doing the Mahamantra okay So um in in our uh, Hare Krishna movement there are basically two different types of chanting that we do One is what we call sankirtan that is when we are all together and yes we will be jumping around and having fun and just you know making a lot of noise uh, especially when we're out on the streets because we're trying to attract attention mm-hmm. you know to somebody who may be interested in the chanting that's one type of chanting the second type of chanting is the private chanting yeah that we do by ourselves on our beads yeah both are bona fide or you know proper authorized methods of um purifying our consciousness so we we chant in order to purify the consciousness and that purifies the soul you know because currently all of us here our consciousness is polluted by this material energy we can't see properly we can't really understand our own situation here um it is very difficult for us it's just like if you have a mirror that is smudged with dirt you can't see the reflection so well you know you can't see So the idea is for our consciousness and our heart to become purified, right? Um so this is the effect of chanting. Yeah. And uh, like I was saying that chanting can be done both privately and with other people. Both both are uh, recommended methods. Yeah. Thank you. But um in the krishna consciousness it is recommended to be in the association with exactly. other other yes. devotees. Yes. So if you prefer chanting by yourself on your beads that's okay you know I'm not I'm not I myself am not a big sort of harinam uh, sankirtan devotee you know sometimes I will go out and chant with the other devotees but every day I pray chant in private by myself um so the recommendations given in shastra with regards to chanting um sorry with with regards to association with other devotees so this is called sadhu sangha uh, so sadhu sangha is very very important because um simply by being with other devotees being around other devotees uh we automatically come into contact with all of the devotional processes right one of the devotional processes is being in class and hearing shrimad bhagavatam and hearing bhagavad gita Right, because that's what devotees do so if you associate with devotees you're going to be going to class that's what devotees do right another process is uh, worshiping the deity you know you can just stand in front of the deity and clap your hands or you can offer a little flower um another process is uh, living in a place of pilgrimage or visiting a place of pilgrimage this farm is a place of pilgrimage so you've come here you know uh another process is uh, just chanting and then the last process is um studying the shastra yeah so you know these these are the um types of things that devotees do so if you are in the association of devotees you will automatically end up doing those things yeah. so uh but with regards to the chanting you know you may want to chant more privately than than in the association of the other devotees that's okay but try to make your life uh so that um you are mainly spending your time with devotees rather than materialists you know because sure. if you end up spending your life with materialists it's very very easy it happens so easily sooner or later you end up doing materialistic activities in other words non religious activities it's so easy for that to happen you know? okay in in private chanting do we need to chant loudly or we can uh chant? it should be audible mm-hmm. yeah it's better to chant it, even if you're chanting quietly to yourself like hari krishna hari krishna hari 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 ram ram hari that's better than just chanting in your mind mm-hmm. i mean chanting in your mind is also good any type of chanting is good but if you chant it so that your ear can hear it that's very beneficial right it's described in the shastra that what we hear it travels through the ear into the heart yeah okay so it should be audible yeah and uh 
uh, try to, when we are chanting, try to be sincere in the, in the chanting and focus on the sound of the chanting. Are you familiar with uh, this list of ten offenses against the chanting? Those ones you should try and avoid. See, every morning in the temple room, we say together these ten things that you must avoid doing. Shall I say, tell you what they are? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, the first offense, so this is aparad, right? The first aparad against the chanting of Krishna's name is to blaspheme other devotees. You know this word blaspheme. Blaspheme means to criticize. Mm. So to criticize other devotees is considered a very serious offense, you know, to find fault with other devotees. So that is number one. You must try and avoid that all the time. The second one is when is uh, to consider uh, demigods, devas, right? That's Shiva, Brahma, G Ganesh, uh, to be the same as Krishna. Uh, they are not the same as Krishna. They are under Krishna. Yeah. That's so. Uh, so if you are uh, considering them to be on the same level as Krishna, then that's an illusion and it's considered an offense against the chanting of Krishna's names. Yeah. The third offense is to disobey the order of the guru. Right? If, you, if you have a guru and the guru gives you instruction, right? if you disregard that, that's also considered an offense against the holy name. Right? The fourth one is to give some interpretation on the holy name of Krishna. In other words, you know, you might be, say if you're a, a university professor, and you might say, you know, to others, oh, you know, Krishna's name, they mean this and they mean that, and it's really this and it's really that, which isn't true. You know. That is also considered an offense. No, 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 no. Um, the, fifth, um, the, the fifth offense against the chanting of the holy names is that um, when we consider uh, the glorious, um, how could we say, the glorious, um, the wonderful results that come from chanting, uh, whether they are internal or external. So the wonderful um, effects that come from chanting, whether they are internal effects or external effects, if we are to consider that, that as being imagination, in other words false, that is also considered an offense against the Holy Name. Number six is um, number six. <laughs> this is terrible. Number seven is to um, uh, commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. In other words, if you are chanting or um, you know using the holy name, and then you commit a sin in that activity. You know, like say for example, you know, if you go to go and hurry down, down the street, you know, that that's your activity. And then while you're doing that, you take the opportunity to engage in some sinful activities, that's also considered an offense. Uh, number eight is uh, if you use the holy name to make money, for example, right? Or if you use the holy name to get some material benefit, which sometimes priests do, I know that. That's also an offense. Number nine is um, if you are uh, talking about the holy name right, or you're talking about Krishna to someone but that person doesn't want to hear and you are forcing that talk on that person, that is also an offense. And the last one, number ten, um, uh, yeah, is to not have proper faith and trust in the Holy Name. You know, we have to trust the Holy Name. We have to have that faith. There's one also that they add. Uh, it is also said, it is also that um, when we are chanting, uh, if we are not paying attention to the chanting, that is also an offense. Yeah. So, you know, it's a little bit like calling the name of someone and then just ignoring them. Because when we are chanting, we are calling out to Krishna. Right, so if he comes and then we just ignore him and do something else, that's also an offense. Yeah.
So this it, this sounds like a lot, but <clears throat> no, no, that makes sense. Yeah, basically all it means is that we need to be respectful. We need to pay attention to the chanting, and just do it for the right reasons. That's it in a summary. You know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. One more question, as in. For the beginner who who never uh, taken any kind of bhakti or whatever. What is the start of your sentence? For any beginner. Any beginner. Yeah. yeah. Um, regardless of their uh, materialistic age, yeah. if they have never been to bhakti or on this path, so how how would they start? Well, the first thing, as we were discussing earlier, is uh, the most important thing is that they get into the association of devotees. Yeah. Because by spending time with devotees, Sadhu Sangha, uh, then they uh, will naturally come into an atmosphere of bhakti. Yeah? So um, if they are living far away from the temple, yeah. um, there's a few things they can do. Like, first of all, uh, you must stop eating meat, right? you need to become vegetarian, strict vegetarian. No, no meat, no fish, no eggs. Right? Uh, also avoid onion and garlic because onion and garlic is disturbing to the senses in the body. Also you must offer all your food to Krishna before you eat it yourself. Right? Krishna says, um, if you, those who are not offering their food before eating it, they eat only sin. They are eating sin right? because everything belongs to Krishna. So we have to make an offering of love to him. We, we just offer the food with love, right? And then after he has enjoyed the food, then we can take it. That's prashad. Then we are allowed to take it, not before that. Yeah? The offering can be very simple, right? You just put it on a clean plate, so even if it's just an apple, you just say, Oh, you know, dear Krishna, please accept this you know, offering and you might chant a little bit of Hare Krishna and then you can eat it yourself. That's very important. The second very important thing is to start chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So, you give up all the meat and onion and garlic. You start offer, <coughs> offering all your food to Krishna before you eat it. You start chanting Hare Krishna, right? Um, even if it's just, you know, we have the Japa Mala. Yeah. You, even if you just chant one round of Japa Mala every day, that's a good start. Yeah. And also, also um, try to come to the temple as much as possible and try to avoid the association of people who are not spiritually interested, you know, materialistic people. They can do so much damage you know, you know, because they influence us. Yeah. Is coming to temple that important because someone who is handicapped and living far away yeah. It's very difficult to reach out to temple. Sadhu Sangha is important. Uh -huh. if, they, if they cannot come to the temple because of some physical problem, um, you can create as much as you can an atmosphere at home, in their home. Yeah. They can also have, you know, like these days there is a TV screen and you can um, uh, put on like live, live stream, you know, live streaming yeah, from other temples around the world. They are giving classes, and uh, so you, you can get a lot of uh, bhakti on the through live streaming. Yeah, but also I would recommend, um, like, say for example, if somebody lives 50 kilometers away or 100 kilometers away from the temple, right, and, and it is difficult for them to come. So what I would recommend is that every, say, maybe every three months or something, you host a program in your own house. So the devotees will come to your house right, and have prasadam, they can even bring prasadam, and they can do kirtan there and associate with those people in your house, and they can give a little class like this. This is called Namaha. Yeah, we do this in this country. We go to people's houses. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Hare Mataji. Oh, Hare Krishna Mataji. Krishna.